let us discuss this duplication formula it's very important formula okay in beta gamma function so now we have to prove that formula so using some basic properties of beta and gamma function we are going to prove it so i hope all of you are familiar with this property so i let me write that thing we know that we know that beta of m comma n so you are familiar with relation between beta and gamma function we have seen in our previous videos so that is nothing but gamma m gamma n divided by gamma n plus n and one more definition of beta function we have seen do you know how to express beta of mn in terms of sin n cos we have already seen right so it is 2 integration 0 to pi by 2 sin raised to 2m minus 1 theta cos raised to 2n minus 1 theta d theta this thing we have already proved okay so if you notice here did you notice beta of m and beta of m and that means left hand side of both equations is same so that's why we can yeah, equate right hand side also getting left hand sides are same so that's why what can we write therefore therefore right hand sides gamma m gamma n divided by gamma n plus n is equal to integration to is there 0 to pi by 2 sin raised to 2m minus 1 theta cos raised to 2n minus 1 theta d theta that means simply we use two properties of beta function nothing else and by using it we have got this one after that i am going to put n is equal to m what i am going to do i am putting n is equal to m let us do that let me write that thing here putting n is equal to m tell me what will you get m we will write as it is simply i am going to put n is equal to m so here i have to write gamma m we have gamma m one more gamma m that means we can write gamma m square right divided by here i am putting n is equal to m so m plus m we will have 2m so that's why divided by gamma 2m 2 integration 0 to pi by 2 so let us see what will happen in this side 2m minus 1 we will write we will copy as it is here i am going to put n is equal to m so what will happen i should write here sign 2m minus 1 theta cos raised to 2m minus 1 theta d theta okay since here i am putting n is equal to m so i got this one right so we will keep right left hand side as it is we will simply work on right hand side few adjustment we are going to do and few formulas we are going to adjust there so see what will i do so this is equal to m dividing and multiplying by 2 raised to 2m minus 1 okay i have divided here and here i will multiply 2 raised to 2m minus 1 sine raised to 2m minus 1 theta cos raised to 2m minus 1 theta d theta did you notice each term has the same power 2m minus 1 so we can write as a common power let us do that so 2 upon 2 raised to 2m minus 1 integration 0 to pi by 2 2 sin theta cos theta all these three terms have a same power 2m minus 1 d theta are you familiar with this formula 2 sin theta cos theta this is formula of sin 2 theta so let us write that formula there so this is equal to 2 upon 2 raised to 2m minus 1 integration 0 to pi by 2 this is formula of sin 2 theta raised to 2m minus 1 d theta right so see after that what will i do after that i am going to put something okay so see i am see 2 theta we have got now we want t only so that's why i am putting 2 theta is equal to t we have got a twice angle we we want simply one angle t theta like that so that's why i'm putting 2 theta is equal to t so 2 theta is equal to t that means theta is equal to obviously 2 will go on that side we will have theta is equal to t by 2 do you know when we put anything okay when we put anything we have to do two things first 
we have to find derivative and second we have to change the limits okay we have to find out new limits we are going to do the same thing here but make a screenshot of it first then we will go further so let us continue so theta is equal to t by 2 we have got let us find its derivative so therefore the derivative of theta is 1 so i wrote d theta derivative of t by 2 is 1 by 2 so that's why 1 by 2 after that we need to write dt so now let us think about limits what will happen for theta is equal to 0 and for theta is equal to pi by 2 see what will happen we have to find limits of t okay okay so if i put theta is equal to 0 here 2 into 0 0 so limit of t will be 0 and if you put theta is equal to pi by 2 2 and 1 by 2 will get cancelled to each other and we will simply have t is equal to pi so therefore therefore we can write that step again gamma m square divided by gamma 2m is equal to 2 upon 2 raised to 2m minus 1 new limits okay i'm going to use new limit 0 to pi right and what we have sine t since 2 theta is equal to t we have put so sine t and raised to 2m minus 1 so sine raised to 2m minus 1 right d d theta what is our value of d theta it is 1 by 2 dt see what will happen that 1 by 2 is a constant it will come outside and 1 2 is already waiting for that so 2 and 1 by 2 will get cancelled to each other and we will have 1 upon 2 raised to 2m minus 1 integration 0 to pi sine raised to 2m minus 1 t dt okay so this is not required now let me remove this one and we will have more space to write then okay yes we have removed it so let us continue okay so are you familiar with one uh, property of definite integral let me write that thing okay we have a space integration 0 to a f of t dt is equal to integration 0 to a by 2 f of t dt plus integration 0 to a by 2 f of a minus t dt so this is property of definite integral okay so maybe you have studied in 12th standard so that property i'm going to use here so see 1 upon 2 raised to 2a minus 1 can you tell me what i should write what is value of a pi if you compare you can easily see value of a is pi so see we can express this integral as a sum of two integrations okay so what can we write here can you tell me yes first integration 0 to pi by 2 since my a is pi f of t that means sine square sine raised to 2 m minus 1 t dt plus second integration i am writing again 0 to pi by 2 correct f of a minus t that means sine raised to 2 m minus 1 a means pi pi minus t dt okay using that property we could write it but what is value of sine pi minus theta sine theta so sine pi minus t is nothing but sine t right so let me write that thing here so 1 upon 2 raised to 2m minus 1 integration 0 to pi by 2 correct and this is sine raised to 2m minus 1 t dt plus plus sine pi minus t is nothing but sine t so that's why i'm writing there integration 0 to pi by 2 sine raised to 2m minus 1 t dt okay since sine this is nothing but sine t but see did you notice both integrations are same so if you add them we will have 2 into integration right so same thing i'm going to write so this is 2 upon 2 raised to 2m minus 1 integration 0 to pi by 2 sine raised to 2m minus 1 t dt okay since both integrations are same so we can express it in this way also so 2 upon 2 raised to 2m minus 1 0 to pi by 2 sine raised to 2m minus 1 t cos raised to 0 t dt so maybe you are confused why i'm writing cos there since i want to use the property of beta function and in for the using that we need to have both sine and cos nothing is there that means cos raised to 0 will be there what is value of cos raised to 0 1 
So that's why I replace 1 by cos raised to 0 t. I want to write something here, but there is no more space to write. So make a screenshot of it, then we will go further. Okay, so let us continue. So I hope you are familiar with this property of beta function. Integration 0 to pi by 2, sin raised to p theta, cos raised to q theta, d theta is equal to 1 by 2 beta of p plus 1 by 2, q plus 1 by 2. So this is a property of beta function. Okay, we can express this integral in terms of beta. Same thing I am going to use. See, if you uh, see this integration, what is value of p? Power of sine is 2m minus 1. So the value of p is 2m minus 1. What is q? q is power of cos. Power of cos is 0 here. So q is equal to 0. So let us use that thing. So this is 2 upon 2 raised to 2m minus 1. I am simply copying this one into what we should write 1 by 2 beta of beta of p. What is my p? 2m minus 1 p plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 divided by q. What is my q? 0 plus 1 divided by 2. Okay. So this 2, 2 will get cancelled. 1 upon 2 raised to 2m minus 1 beta of plus 1 minus 1 will get cancelled. So we will have 2m by 2 correct. Here we will have 1 by 2. So again 2, 2 will get cancelled. That means simply we have beta m comma 1 by 2. We have already seen the relation between beta and gamma function. So I'm going to convert in terms of gamma. See what will happen. Let me continue here. So gamma m whole square divided by gamma 2m. So this is our left hand side, right? So in right hand side, what is happening? 1 upon 2 raised to 2m minus 1. Okay, beta m comma 1 by 2. I'm going to re, uh, use the relation between beta gamma function. So I'm converting in gamma function gamma m gamma 1 by 2 divided by we have to add m plus 1 by 2 okay do you know the value of ga gamma 1 by 2 it is root pi so let us write so so therefore gamma m square divided by gamma 2m 1 upon 2 raised to 2m minus 1 into gamma m root pi divided by gamma m plus 1 by 2. See on this side also we have gamma m square that means 2 gamma m. and here we have gamma m. So 1 gamma m we can easily cancel. So let us do that. So therefore what are the remaining terms gamma m on this side gamma 2m here root pi divided by, divided by 2 raised to 2m minus 1 gamma m plus 1 by 2. What will we do? We will shift this denominator on this side. We will shift this denominator on that side. See what will happen. So therefore 2 raised to 2m minus 1. I am shifting it here. Gamma m. Let us shifting this term there. Gamma m plus 1 by 2 root pi and let us shift this term on that side. So gamma 2m. So in this way we proved this duplication formula. The proof is over. Okay some constructive steps we have done in this proof so i suggest you to watch this video one two three or four times okay so you can easily understand this one make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you bye bye